Hi, I'm Kent. Let's see if we can make some plaster slip casting molds with less bubbles in them. In doing slip casting for a while, I've actually realized that I'm doing two different things at once. One is I'm slip casting the pots. The other thing is I'm making the slip casting molds. So those are radically different skills. I've been making my own plaster molds and having pretty good success, but I keep getting bubbles in them and they keep deteriorating. I've been collecting up a few different candidates for how to make that better. And in this video, I want to go ahead and try them all out. So what's the problem? Here are a couple of molds that I've made. If you look closely inside, there's a bunch of small little pinholes. This one has actually clay trapped in it since I haven't cleaned out my mold. This one also has some pinholes in the bottom. They're slightly larger and there's a larger defect. On the outside, you can really see all the bubbles going on. This is the outside of the mold, so it really isn't critical to the pot making process, but I think it is indicative of the problem. My plaster, as I am making my molds, is capturing bubbles, and those are transferring through. Here's another shot of the bubbles down the bottom. All these dark specks are bubbles. And there's some larger ones up in top as well. Again, these don't transfer into the pot, but these definitely do. And my other mold with the larger bubbles in the bottom. And here you can see all the bubbles on the outside. There seem to be lots of different suggestions on how to improve this. And some of them I think are more valid than others. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those to the test in this video. First up is using Windex. So here's some Windex and here is my mold. So this is the outside of the mold, it's this surface here, and here's the inside of the mold, and I have a 3D printed support here to support the mold. The idea is I'll put these together and pour plaster in here, and that results in this mold. So what's up with the Windex? The idea is I spray Windex on the mold surface, this one and this one, and that will help release any bubbles that get trapped against the mold itself. Windex is a surficant, and what happens is it reduces the surface tension of water, and therefore it flows better. And since the plaster has a lot of water in it, Hopefully that means the bubbles can flow out a little bit easier. It's a little bit of mold prep that I want to try. Next up is actually mixing the plaster. So I've been using this. It's an attachment for my drill. At this point, it has all sorts of plaster caked on it. I haven't cleaned it very well, but it spins around and has these fan-like blades. These blades, the way they're designed, actually push the liquid up or down, depending upon if you're going forward or backwards. And I think this is the wrong thing to do. In the normal mode of operation, it spins around and actually will suck air down into the plaster. This is just something I had in my garage when I first started mold making and I've been using it. A lot of people will advocate actually mixing the plaster by hand. I could totally see how that would minimize bubbles because you'd be very gentle with it. However, reading the data sheet for the plaster, it actually looks like you want to agitate the plaster quite a bit to make it stronger. There's a tension here between weak plaster and bubble free versus having stronger plaster and mixing it more. Somewhere I saw a different type of mixer that was being used on plaster. And this one here is a fan type. And the idea is it spins around and it slings the plaster out to the sides of the bucket as opposed to pulling air down. I wanted to give this a shot as well instead of my traditional mixer. So that's the second thing I want to change. And the last one is a new to me toy. Let me go ahead and reset and I'll show you that. And here it is. This is actually an orbital shaker. I've seen going around YouTube and Instagram people using table shakers to try and vibrate the bubbles out of their plaster. I looked online and they were more money than I wanted to spend. I found a local auction that was selling surplus used industrial equipment. So this here looks like a laboratory piece of equipment that's used to shake beakers. I think these little attachments here are meant to go ahead and hold the beakers and the table will go and do this orbital vibration. It has a timer, which I don't think I'm going to use, and a speed setting so it can go faster and slower. This thing is deceptively heavy, but that's probably good because it actually can vibrate around quite a bit. I think I'm going to try it on its lowest setting. I will go ahead and take my bucket and put it on here and let it vibrate and see if I can get the bubbles out. Some of you may know my background is in research, actually in technology, and so the scientist to me is very strong. And if I really wanted to understand what was causing the bubbles, I would manipulate these one at a time and try them in combinations. You've seen other videos where I've done just that. For this one, I'm just going to try it all at once. I want to see if I can get better plaster molds. And if any of these work, I'll go ahead and happy to use them all together. So with that bit of background, let's go ahead and set up and pour a plaster mold. All right, I think I have everything we need. I went ahead and measured out my water and measured out my plaster. Long ago on my 3D printed shell, I wrote down how much plaster and water I need. So I don't need to remember to make this mold. Highly recommended. A while ago, I made a video trying to test different ratios of plaster to water and mixing time. So I'm using that here. Go ahead and look back at that video if you're curious about the actual full experiment. Here, I'm just using the results. First up is to slake the plaster. So I'm gonna take the dry ingredients and slowly dump them on the wet. This will then sit for three and a half minutes. And while this is slaking, let's go ahead and put the Windex on the mold. I'm just gonna spray this on. And do the outside of this one. Maybe more than I need, but probably better more than less. Okay, this is done slaking and now I need to mix it. And I think I'm actually gonna mix it on the shaker table so I can vibrate out the bubbles. Turn this on. I'm 
I'm gonna try the gentle setting, gentle-ish setting, and then this needs to mix for four minutes. All right, that's four minutes. Not the most ergonomic way to use the drill, but good enough. I do like this paddle. It seems to have injected a lot less bubbles. So now, we trade. And I pour plaster into the mold. I'm gonna go ahead and pour the bottom too to get it wet. Alright, it looks like the plaster has set. This did react differently than my normal mixing of plaster. I think the shaking table continued to mix the plaster for a while, so I wound up with a little bit of water on top. So pouring plaster is a little bit hectic, so what I did is I poured the plaster in, I put it a little bit on the inside mold so it was all wetted down, and then put some packing tape here on the top so that the inside part of the mold doesn't float. So let's go ahead and move the table out of the way and go ahead and demold this. I think it is set up enough that we can do that. I got all the packing tape off. This will come out. And then we should be able to take out the inside mold. And this is the one that really matters. So that is not exactly what I was expecting. Let's see if I can get this up close for you. But clearly there's a bunch of bubbles here on the top, but they're at the surface. And unfortunately I see a bunch down the bottom too. It's gonna to pull this out the rest of the way. Plaster got down on the back side of my mold. All right, got to release. And now the magic of the silicone is this will just peel off. So the outside looks much, much better. So compared to my other molds, there's a huge difference. This one's very smooth, this one's very bubbly. Definitely something worked. I really like my new toy here. It seems to have done a good job of moving the bubbles up through the plaster and out of it. And it seems like the Windex seemed to work as well. I think that's very much evidenced by the outside of my mold here looking a lot better. And I really like the mixer. It wasn't sucking bubbles down into the plaster like my old one was. So I think that is also a win. The last problem is really these bubbles getting trapped inside of my mold. Really the problem is all of the top surfaces. So I think I know what happened. The bottom here is where I'm getting bubbles and I'm getting bubbles here there was still air trapped inside the plaster and the vibrations actually caused the bubbles to rise, but there was no place for them to go. They actually got stuck here and they got stuck here. So they got stuck in the very bottom, they got stuck at the slip. So as the table's shaking, all the bubbles are trying to rise and they don't have any place to rise outside of the bottom here or on this slip here. I think I need a path for all the bubbles to escape, which really means I need to make the mold upside down. All the bubbles would rise and I might wind up with bubbles on this outside surface, but since it's the outside of the plaster mold, it really doesn't matter. The inside, which matters, all the bubbles would be released away from that. If you have any other ideas of how I can make my current silicone mold work, that'd be awesome. Please let me know in the comments below. At this point, I think I don't have any problems with my mixing of plaster and I think I'm actually getting the bubbles to release. I'm just trapping them, unfortunately, inside of my mold. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks.